Right, the van is out, that means we're on our travels, but the question is where and what is this all about? This is no ordinary testing on tour because in fact I am just three miles from home at a place where I was a member well 35 years ago the very first golf club that I joined was here we're at Harden Golf Club it's a bit of a nemesis of mine in the fact that I never ever played very well here I'm about to put those demons to rest So we're away at Harden Golf Club, glad to see that first tee shot get underway and uh, those of you who are interested, it was a nine wood which I reviewed the other day and uh, well it was perfect bit of clubbing. Well onto the green in reg, got a little bit of work to do but hopefully if we get the pace early we can start off with a nice par. Right, concentrate. This could be better than a par. Oh. Do you know what? That was good. Green roll true and nice, so that's also nice to see. And yeah, tidied up for a four. We're away here at Harden Golf Club and I'll look forward to showing you just a little bit more about this place. Right, the fifth hole is where some changes have been made here at Arden Golf Club and I've got to say it's a real, a nice change to what is a, uh, really a short par 3. This makes it really interesting, they've built a little bit of a uh, ravine with a sleeper wall there that you can see from the drone footage just literally right in front of the green and all of a sudden it changes things up significantly because although you play a little blind from the tee shot, there was always that element that you could just allow your ball to run out if you didn't quite get it right. Well, obviously now that is not the case and I imagine more balls finish uh, long than they do short. That's a decent enough strike and unfortunately we won't know our fate until we get just over the brow. Right, next up in this challenge is going to be uh, hole number six and uh, it's certainly one that adds into that list of nemesis holes. It's stroke index one, there's a railway line that runs down the left hand side and I think I've put many on a train to Chester in the times that I've played here before. The ideal line is directly over the middle of that tree if my memory serves me right. It's a little bit, um, yeah, from memory but I'm going to be hitting, I've got a little bit of a left to right shot. There's that train by the way. So we're going to see if we can go left side of the tree with a little bit of cut back. Well, pretty much as planned. I didn't put it on the railway line. There was a little bit of cut. I've got a feeling we'll have quite a long one in. We're going to get over the brow and see if we can get onto this green in reg, which I never seem to be able to do. Well, do you know what? That's uh, a decent six iron at 170 up the hill. You play this blind as well. And as you can see, hopefully from the footage we've gathered, is this is a tiny green from memory and it's protected by a couple of tiny bunkers as well. So again, it's fingers crossed. I'm not too sure. I had a really good strike there, to be honest with you. So I'm hoping I'm somewhere close at least. But uh, stroke index one, good drive, good six iron. Bit more. Good line as well. Well, maybe I'm just not destined to uh, ever make par on this hole. We've got a sniff at it. Come on. 
Can the Mez 1 do it again? Oh. For a minute there I thought it had, but then it just crept away. The pin position caught me out because uh, I didn't get a yardage to the pin, only to the green and uh, obviously the front edge. And it's a long green, the flag is right at the very back, so maybe the wrong decision to put. Should have chipped, but there you go. Still a bogey on stroke one again. Well, it was a decent birdie, there's quite a swing in that putt and a help with the read from Hannah to be honest with you. Um, but interestingly enough I played it from the white which I've never played before and uh, it actually made the hole easier if anything because I was far enough back from a tree that I'm generally behind on the fairway to play that second shot in which was five wood and then I played quite a nice controlled wedge and rolled in the putt. Right so next up it was on to hole number eight which is another hole that's caused me problems in the past and that's largely because you've got to stay well you've got to stay le more left than you perhaps think off that tee position and as you can see from my tee shot struck really well just a tad leaky off to the right hand side but uh, you'll notice when I get down to the ball why it's important to stay left and that's because there's some rather large trees now in my way that are going to uh, cause me a bit of a problem. So we planted camera on green already for my eight iron and I'm about to launch over the trees and land on what is an elevated green. It's long and it's narrow and that pin once again is tucked right at the back end. Unfortunately the camera was wasted at the back of the green because I never hit it. I stayed up just high and maybe a month or two ago you'd have expected a kick round off firmer ground and that might have gathered into that back side but either way it left a little bit of a chip and fortunately a decent putt to walk off with a par. So on to hole number nine and this is just a great hole first of all visually. You're in an elevated tee position which is always nice. The hole is laid out in front of you and you can see there yet again that at the bottom there's a, uh, another pond that awaits to gather your drive and that's why I was again a little unsure of as to what club to play. I went with driver, it's quite a controlled shot and again uh, worked out incredibly well but we only had 10 or 15 yards at best to, uh, to, to play with if you like otherwise we'd have been in and taken a drop but fortunately came up that little bit short left 145 in and once again you're just conscious of uh, there's a pond now that runs left hand side of that green so nice easy eight iron making sure we stay right to the flag not taking any risks on we've got a two put par but again two golf holes that are really well designed there's an element of uh, certainly risk or reward i suppose just depending on how close you want to be for your approach shot really starts to put you in significant danger in both water hazard and tree line fairway so two really good golf holes but so far we're keeping it all intact the nemesis holes yes they were there but we played them reasonably well and we're keeping the score ticking along nicely kick on a bit kick on a bit I do you know what, I think it's a real opportune moment. We've, we're playing every hole here on the golf course, but only some of them are featuring my sort of nine that I'm choosing. And we're choosing them before I tee off, by the way, not depending on how good we score on them. But uh, I just want to pay tribute to the, the green staff in terms of the greens. They've been in exceptionally good condition, as has the course, to be fair. But you've got to remember, just looking visually right now, we're almost approaching a day or two away from October. The course looks in really fine condition, which hopefully you're seeing that from the camera and what we're able to produce in terms of this video but yeah a hats off to the green staff the uh, the course is looking exceptionally well particularly when you think at the time of year we're at right now
Now for anyone who's played Harden Golf Club, they will always recall one hole at least, and that's always gonna be the 18th. This is a fantastic finishing hole. It's a little par three. It's 155 yards that we're playing it from pretty much off the back tees today. The green, as you can see, is nestled amongst the trees and there's not a lot of bailout room. There's no left or right miss. You've pretty much got to stick it on that dance floor. And I'm hoping that's how we can finish off what's been a decent round here today. And then it's up onto that balcony and a celebratory drink. But first of all, we've got to decide on what club to play. This is all over it. Is the club right? Oof, that's a finish, Han. I rarely hit the green on this hole, but I can't recall birdieing it. It's been a nice finish. He's got it. So that's it, a birdie finish couldn't be any better. And I've no idea what my score was to be quite honest with you because I've played the full 18 holes in the testing series, which like I said, make sure you keep an eye out of uh, me trying out what are some Vega irons around here. They've performed very well, to be honest with you. My performance was pretty decent as well. And in those demons, well, I don't say they'll ever be eradicated from the game of golf, but I've certainly probably played better than I have done for quite some time at this golf course alone. But I hope more importantly, it showed you what Harden Golf Club is like. And I already said earlier on the video, the green staff have done a tremendous job here. This course is playing really, really nice indeed. It's in North Wales, which is very much on the border of Chester, just a few miles away. So if you are in this neck of the woods, then make sure you give Harden a go and come down and play and see if you can do any better than I did. Right, I think it's time for a pint. We're all finished and uh, go and sit up on that balcony and uh, talk about the ones that got away. And I'll see you all soon.